Welcome to the latest episode of Five on the Floor and the Five Reasons Sports Network. Thanks for joining us on your favorite podcast app. Google Podcast is going away. If you're Android, we recommend that you switch to Spotify. Also check us out, of course, on Apple Podcasts, Red Circle, and the Five Reasons YouTube channel. Make sure you hit like, subscribe, and turn the notifications on. Also check out Off the Floor. That's our new Discord server. Ten different channels. We're following the NCAA tournament on there. Of course, following the Heat. That's where you get direct Q and A's with us, host updates. And again, lots of time to converse with fellow Heat fans away from Twitter. So check it out off the floor, $2.99 per month, and you get access to everything. Link right here in the description on the podcast feed, as well as on the YouTube channel. Also, check out the great sponsors of the Five Reasons Sports Network. Includes our friends over at Mobile, C-Arm, and Staffing Services. Nelson and his family, huge Miami Heat fans. But the biggest thing is, if you're a medical professional, you definitely should reach out to them. They rent the C-Arm standalone. They also rent it with the X-Ray Tech. Again, it's called Mobile C-Arm and Staffing Services. They offer complete in-office procedures where they bring the C-Arm the table, the X-Ray Tech, and everything else. So check them out. They're at c-armandstaffing.com. Again, that's c armandstaffingcom They can set up those pain management procedures right in your office. So reach out to them today again nelson at c dash arm and and now today's episode down the best game yeah uh five on the floor ride for my dogs where here's the thing you can check the score hustle hard couple scars wearing bubble frogs just like brother said you in trouble y'all kept the floor plan got an all band y'all seen the block stop the one hand and Pat, we trust. It's power. Have the guts. We're here to bring the heat. Y'all can hang it up. Welcome to Five on the Floor, a daily insider show on the Miami Heat and the NBA, featuring Ethan Skolnick, Greg Sylvander, and Alex Toledo, plus others from the Five Reasons Sports Network. All right, welcome back to Five on the Floor. Here's today's floor plan. I'm Ethan Skolnick. You can follow me at Ethan J. Skolnick. And at Five Reasons Sports, I got Greg Sylvander. You can follow him at Greg Sylvander. I got Alex Toledo. You can follow him at Tropical Blanket. We come to you with the Miami Heat having 10 games remaining on their schedule. They are not out of the play-in at this stage. But the big topic we're going to get into is who's actually going to play in these games and why it is that we're at a stage of the season where there's only one guy on this team who may play 72 games, and that's a rookie who looks like he's broken down at this point because he's had to play all these games because so many others are not playing, and that's Jaime Hawkins. Duncan Robinson is the other who could play 72, but most likely won't because we still don't know when he's going to be back. This comes to you on a day that Tyler Hero was in the news again because Shams from The Athletic and other places tweeted out something that seemed to me at the time even like speculation, not actual information. We know that the national guys don't have the same bead on heat information that they do on information on other teams because the heat don't really leak very much, and especially to the national reporters. But he essentially said that no one knew when Tyler was going to be back. And then that led to speculation that he might not come back at all this season. And Tyler followed up with... The cap emoji. Did I get this correct? That means not true, or basically, right? Is that that good with the kids? Well, Greg, I can't go to you on that. I can go to Alex. Brady's not here. Damn. Um, Just a shot at me. Mid. Go ahead. I'll catch that straight. Continue. You're you're eighty percent of my age, and actually, eighty percent of the games would be a lot for a Heat player to play. Um, So he he returned with the cap emoji, and then. The other tweet today, and uh, this is not really necessarily a Tyler episode, so I don't want to over-focus on, the, on this, but it, obviously it's part of it for Heat fans. Um, the exact tweet that he saw, which was via Shams, but it was tweeted by the Heat versus Haters account, was Tyler Hero has, quote, Tyler Hero has not played in a while. There's no sense when he'll be back. So he tweeted, cap. But then he also tweeted separately, I just had a great workout, but I ain't coming back no time soon. I will acknowledge that I missed the irony or the sarcasm, I should say, of that tweet at first. But apparently this is more of a sarcastic tweet. Okay, I just had a great workout, but right, I'm not coming back anytime soon. That's the way to sort of read it. 
Okay, so that's the Tyler part of this. But this comes after 24 hours of discussion about the team superstar, which is Jimmy Butler. And the criticism of Jimmy, which I have, I'm going to say it right now, I have not seen this in the five years he's been here in social media. This level of criticism. And it follows him attending a tennis tournament, uh, taking pictures with Neymar. Um, some said it was DJ Khaled. It was not DJ Khaled. Of course, it was uh, his friend Ernie who was in the photos. And um, as well as a couple of tennis players who he's close with, he tends to uh, go wherever Alcaraz goes and a couple of the others. Okay, And of course, the Miami Open is down here. And then they were all at the Heat game last night. But of course, Jimmy Butler was not playing. Neymar was there. I guess they're 0-4 when Neymar is there and all the rest of this. A lot of criticism of Jimmy for not playing in a way that I've never really seen. Okay. And I'm going to start here before we start to get into some of the numbers. And we're going to try to dissect this in a reasonable, nuanced way if we can. Miami, Miami Heat players do not play enough anymore. Thank you. That's where I'm at. They don't play enough anymore. And what the reasons for that are, and we know that some of it is freak injuries. I don't like to speculate on players' injuries because I don't know how hurt they are. I don't know how sick they are. Okay. But the collective, okay, the macro is the Heat didn't used to be like this. And I, nope. I we need to go into, right? We need to go into why. Is this a mm -hmm. decision that's made by the organization? that either we're going to hold guys out longer because we want them to be 100% when they come back, or maybe we're not going to hold them as accountable as we used to hold them, or maybe we don't want to deal with their agents, the other people around them, so we're going to be more lenient. Is this players who are more spoiled than they used to be, taking the lead from other players around the team? But we're going to go through the numbers, and the numbers are undeniable. Miami Heat players used to play a lot. And now they don't. And that's just facts. Okay, so again, whether this is by design, whether it's by some bad luck and some by design, or whether it's all bad luck, we need to get into it. Okay? And that's without me saying that I know how sick Jimmy was, or Tyler is. I don't. <laughs> and I'm not going to criticize them individually when I don't know the answer to that. But I do know that it's not an acceptable situation at this point. It's just not. You're, you're 10 games before the end of the season, and it just seems like this team is content to be in the playoffs. That's how it feels to Heat fans, okay? And if I hear that message, they don't want to go on Twitter right now because <laughs> that is the perception. And, Greg, I'll, I'll just go to this before we start to go to some of the numbers. It's as angry as I've seen Heat fans – Without it being like a transaction that didn't go through, which a lot of times yep. we defend the organization on that because the fans don't understand everything that goes into that and the things that are beyond the team's control or what they might have in mind later on. We know fans are reactionary and they just want moves. So we defend them a lot. Okay. But beyond that, um, as we look at the overall situation, I, other than that, or like a bad playoff loss, I, I've not seen the level of anger on social in a long time. So I'm going to read you a message I got. I got a text earlier, 8.36 a.m. I got this text message from a friend who I would consider to be um, as big a Heat fan as me, as a as he's as plugged into every single game. He is a lifelong Heat fan, and this is what he messaged me. Morning, Greg. Sorry if I haven't been around as much lately, but I've been totally checked out on this team the last few weeks. When I do randomly check a game, so many guys are out over and over, just uninspired. I can't say watching, I can't stay watching it without getting upset. So I just turn it back off. That's from a lifelong Heat fan who messaged me. Um, it's one of two things. It's either this is strategic and all of the the load management is top-down strategic, although I don't know how much of it, 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 that's what it is. Or we have a group of players that have taken this to an extreme, and maybe there's a bit of luck involved as well. I think we should acknowledge that. 
but it's unacceptable and it's not sustainable. You can't be a high level team. Go look around the league at all the teams in the top seeds. They don't have guys with only 50 games played so far with 10 games to go. Like there's just not a ton of that. So this is something we'll dissect that we'll get into the numbers, but I will say that when Jimmy missed that game last night, I, the heat fans, there was a shift in consciousness. That's all I'll say that, that I have not seen from the fan base yet. And there was something about Jimmy missing that particular game in the optics of him being where he was the night before that matter. It's the golden state warriors. Like people come to town to see, like we got our guy, um, Dan Healy, who flies all the way across the country, like uh, across the the pond to come and watch the heat. And that's a game where you got Steph in the building and, and Jimmy doesn't play. And you saw where he was the day before the optics of it. Don't look good. I don't want to speculate beyond that. The optics of it don't look good. And the team has kind of followed suit. And that's a weird place to be when there's only a couple guys leading by example, Bam and Duncan being primarily those two. And then the Rook Jaime, um, where they're available most of the time, Bam probably can get to what 70, 71 games maybe. Um, so I consider that to be pretty available. Other than that, it's been a complete mixed bag and the fans are feeling it right now. Yeah. And again, we're going to get to the numbers, uh, on all that as we go forward. Um, but Alice, I'll, I'll go to you on this, uh, you know, before we do. Jimmy has earned the benefit of the doubt in terms of what he's produced down here when it's mattered. And so I, I felt like the fans were kind of on board with it, like what Greg is getting at. Like, I think we're kind of on board with it. Okay, preserve yourself. You don't need to play 70, 75 games. Give us 60 to 65 strong games. And I think that's why it hit yesterday. Part of it is the optics of photos and attendance. Remember, look, guys get sick overnight, okay? It happens. It doesn't necessarily mean he was out partying. I And and lots, I'll say this too, as somebody who's done this for a long time and was on the road with players. So a lot of guys come back to the hotel at four in the morning, play really well the next day, okay? Uh, so I don't I don't get into all of that, okay? there and, and for some of those who are critical of Jimmy, for being in movies or now is like he has 10 different commercials and all the rest of this. I don't care what they do on their off days. There are a lot worse things to be doing than to be on a movie set. Okay. <laughs> or to be even recording, um, you know, a commercial for six, seven hours. Okay. As long as he's working on his craft enough, he's getting the proper rest for him. That's fine. Here's where I come down. And I'll, again, I'll go to you, Alex on this. If he's going to play 60 games, play them pedal to the middle. And I think that's where for me, this has gone off the path a little bit this year, because in a lot of the marquee games we talked about this year, and this team is now, by the way, Oh, and nine as a home underdog. That means when they play good teams in what should be a favorable place for them to play, they lose. And some of them, he hasn't played. And some of them, he just hasn't played with high intensity. And I kind of feel like if he had played the games against Boston and Milwaukee and the others with high intensity, people wouldn't care as much when he misses a game here or there because he's had legitimate reasons for missing a lot of them, right? Or maybe even all of them. But I feel like that's why this turned a little bit. I completely get that sense. And, you know, I think it's fair, especially when you start comparing to heat stars of the past, right? It's like, you know, if you're a Heat fan, you're saying we still need you to be there to get us, you know, to a decent seating so or you don't have to do this again, or you don't have to play, um, you know, kind of the three best teams in the Eastern Conference back to back to back just to get to the finals, right? Like the seating, I know they don't, they don't give a shit about seating, but, you know, um, if I think if the NBA regular season hasn't been so de-emphasized over the years, Right. This would be a different story. It might be like a four seed right now or five seed. I just think it's gotten to that point where, you know, as time has gone by, like I think the Heat do it like Jimmy and the Heat do it like more than other teams. But it really feels like a, a league wide pattern. So, like, I agree with you that, you know, no other team has like their stars missing that many games. Uh, and, you know, the Heat has had such a weird season with the 35 
starting lineups. Like it's really hard to get a representative sample, especially ever since the acquisitions that were made, right? Where like these guys have been thrown into regular rotation minutes, right? Like Terry was thrown into a, as a starter, and then you know Patty and Delon as guys who are who have come in and replaced others who've been out. Like it hasn't been stable, and even you know when there was some health, it wasn't that great either. Um, and so it's hard to look at it like, uh, you know, they're a contender. Everything's fine. You give them the benefit of the doubt. I give Jimmy the benefit of the doubt because we've seen this before. But when it comes to the heat, it's like I can see like I, I can see the vision for who they want to be. But there has been no consistency. There's been no stability. Right. And and Jimmy has been kind of the guy who set the tone for that. And like you like you said, Ethan, I'm not going to speculate on you know, how hurt a guy is or how sick a guy is. And I, and I I just roll my eyes at the whole, like, oh, Jimmy was out at the U.S. Open. Oh, Jimmy has a life outside of basketball. He's told you this a million right. times. He's, this is, not, this is mm -hmm. the worst kept secret. It's not a secret at all. Like, I, I understand people don't like it when you see, like, you know, a guy miss a game after being out at the U.S. Open. I, I don't know what to tell you, man. Like, this is kind of the trend with the NBA at this point. It's like, if he's actually sick, which, you know, I'm not going to say he isn't, then it's perfectly reasonable to sit. I'm like, I wasn't upset at them for losing that game last night, the way they did where they just kind of ran out of gas, which makes perfect sense when you look at all the guys they're missing uh, most of their offense. Right. And, but Jimmy has been the one again, who has set this tone where it's like, like you said, Ethan, even when you do play, it's not balls to the wall, pedal to the metal. Like, and, and I just think that's kind of the product of the, the NBA that we live in now where it's like, okay, you're not going to, shorten the season because you want to milk all this money well we're going to be like conservative right and i'm not talking about jimmy by himself i just mean around the league and like i said jimmy doesn't more but we're going to be conservative with the way we are it's like we're not going to play through injury for regular season matchups for tnt matchups i think everything has been you know winning in the playoffs is what matters that is all that matters that's what we've talked about for years and years and years that's how the players feel that's how coaches feel this is kind of the, the reality of that. It's like they want to make sure that, you know, it's, they're on like a maintenance plan, it feels like, to make sure that they're good to go for the playoffs. And it's really hard to feel like that's not happening with the Heat right now when we've seen it play out in other seasons where it's like Jimmy is just kind of like he's playing well. He's still like a top 20 player when he's out there for the most part. You know, he has some bad games here and there. But, you know, he, he turns it up to a different level in the playoffs. I think that's hard to replicate year after year as you get older. But I think he's doing this because he's getting older and he's played so many long playoff runs already. Well, and others are saying he's he does it because they didn't give him enough help. I mean, that's another conversation. Like, you know, and again, there are a lot of reasons to kind of look at here. And, you know, some have said, OK, let me just throw them out here before we go forward, because I, I do want to get to the numbers because the numbers are startling. The, I, the, if even if you want to get into. A lot of these things being freak injuries, okay, which I've talked about with Tyler many times, right? Um, you know, or stepping on a foot or something like that. It does not – that does not explain – were the Heat lucky for the first 20-something years of Pat Riley's tenure as team president? Because – No. Guys played. We're, we're going to get into it. But there, when, you, when people were going through the list today, okay – and they want to blame the front office for this. Like some want to blame the training staff. Some want to blame the front office. Some want to blame the players, right? Some want to want to blame a black cloud over the arena or whatever it is, okay? But some are saying, okay, if you didn't have some, such an undersized team that had to work so hard that maybe you wouldn't have some of these injuries. In some cases, it's, well, the team practice is too hard. I can tell you that's not the case anymore, okay? Like that is not – okay, Pat Riley had these guys working after back-to-backs – for six hours, okay, and again, I was there at LaSalle waiting for them to come out, okay, and then they played the next day, <laughs> okay, and he played an eight-man rotation, so th that's just not, and, and there are some who believe, actually, and I've actually heard this from credible NBA people, including some associated with the Heat, who think that the lack of practicing these days has contributed to more injuries, OK, like they've eliminated a lot of these back to backs, but it's changed kind of the practice schedule in some ways and that the guys are not as conditioned maybe as they used to be, at least for game action, because they're not getting in the work and practice that they used to. And again, that's league wide. That's not just here. 
But that is a philosophical change. And some of it has been caused by the players and their agents and a conscious decision that we're not we're going to preserve ourselves for later. But I can tell you this was not the organizational philosophy before. This organization would go for the one seed. That's the way they were wired. And we were critical of it, Greg. Again, before we're going to go to break here in a second to get into some of the numbers. But the criticism of Riley way back was he worked them too hard, he practiced them too hard. He ran him into the ground as a one or two right. seed, and then they lost to the Knicks, right? Yep. They, they would always be short on every shot in the playoffs because you felt like they had been worked too hard, and they always were a top seed. Like that was the reoccurring theme, and they always had the best defense in the league. And they, you know, you saw that all season long consistently, and everyone from PJ Brown on. PJ may have played 81 games in all of those runs, like over and he over did. and over. He did. Like, he did. He did. You know who else did during the during the big three runs? Myra Chalmers. Yep. Always out there. Norris Cole. Always out there. Not just the, the younger players either. Okay. And we're going to get into that. Ray Allen and Shane Battier in the 12-13 season. This is under Spo, not under Pat. Okay. In the 12-13 season, I think they missed a combined, I did the math, to, I think a combined 11 games between the two of them. They were a combined 71 years old, Ray Allen and Shane Battier, in the 12-13 season. It's not just an age thing. Okay, so after the break, we'll get into some of those numbers. And then, again, I, I'm willing to take all opinions on this, of why this is happening. I just keep coming back to the same point. It's not, this is, the fans are, are tired of it, I think. Okay, and the only way that this is going to be validated is if they have another run like they had last year. And I don't know right now that any of us see that coming. All right, we'll get to that in a minute. But first, a word from one of our great new sponsors. Hey, it's Ethan Skolnick for the Five Reasons Sports Network. We've got a great new sponsor that fits with us perfectly. It's called jerseys305.com. That's jerseys305.com. This is your home for dead stock and vintage jerseys from the Heat, Panthers, Dolphins, Marlins, and the other local teams. Their mission was born from a passion for wearing jerseys of the old styles and the past players. Jerseys 305 aims to make every fan stand out from the crowd with unique pieces that you don't commonly see anymore. Maybe 10, 15, 20 years ago, but not today. And Jerseys 305 was created by the fans, for the fans. They're diehards just like you. In fact, they're probably listening to this episode right now so check them out jerseys 305 their partnership with five reason sports celebrating with a 10 percent discount on the next purchase using the code five at checkout unlock your exclusive savings on the entire vintage collection all right so let's get to some of the numbers here as we come back um let me start from way back Okay, so these are uh, these are some of. I'm gonna see if I can still find this. These are some of uh, the teams that Greg and I would actually remember. As I can try to locate this, hold on. Oh, here we go. Ready? All right, 96, uh, 97 season. I'm I'm gonna go back here. This and this is way back. This is old timey NBA. Okay, but I'm not doing 95, 96 only because that was the year that Pat kind of put the team together on the fly. Yeah. Uh, well, in that year. We just said that there's only one guy on this team that has a chance to play 72 games, and that's Hawkes, who we've all, I think, agreed needs a little bit of time off right now. Duncan was going to get there, but if he misses two more games, he won't. And Bam is going to just miss it, most likely. Well, he's going to miss it, but for, probably just by a little. All right, so 96-97, these players all played 72 games. Ike Austin, Tim Hardaway, he was in the 30s, by the way. P.J. Brad had bad knees. Uh, P.J. Brown, Keith Askins, and Vashawn Leonard. Five guys. 97-98 season. Eric Murdoch, Tim Hardaway again. Vashawn Leonard, P.J. Brown again. Dan Marley. Can I ask you a quick question? How many of those yeah. guys played 80? Um, I don't have it offhand, but I can tell you, uh, just looking at it, Ike Austin did that one year. He was a younger player that they had kind of, you know, that he was one of Pat's first projects, and I and PJ did for sure, and yeah. PJ did the second year too, um, and Murdoch did in ninety seven ninety eight for sure. But and Vashon was right there again, a younger player, and then Marley, who again Marley was supposedly broken down when they got him, 
he played yeah. at least 72 games that next year. The year after, just a 50-game season, but it was a compressed season. Six players on that team played at least 46 of the 50. Okay. Including Terry Porter, who was age 35 and played all 50 games. All right. So that's old school Riley, crazy ass, long practices, right? Not the conveniences that the players have now. <laughs> all right. Things were not as easy for them as they are now. They didn't have a practice facility right there in the arena. Okay. Again, it was LaSalle. It was, you know, across the city, all the rest of this kind of stuff. And they were going to Miami arena and all that. And yet somehow they managed to play all of these games. All right. Then if you want to go into the Spolster era again, I've mentioned this before the big three, the 2012, 13 season. This is where it gets interesting. These guys all played at least 72 games. Norris Cole, Ray Allen, at age 37. Mario Chalmers, LeBron James, who did not take games off. Did not. Had to be forced to take games off. Udonis Haslam, Chris Bosh, Shane Battier at age 34. Dwayne Wade did not. He played 69, and everybody complained he didn't play enough. Nice. Nice. And the other one, thank you, and the other one, and, and this is why I say it's actually eight of nine who did, because Birdman played 44 games after his acquisition. He was obviously on a pace to play way over the 72 if he'd been with the Heat the whole time. So you're really talking about eight of their nine rotation players. What played is at least, at least 72 games. And the only one who didn't was Dwayne, who missed 13. And again, there was a lot of criticism of Dwayne not so much that year, but there was some, but the year after, of course, uh, for not playing enough. And then if we want to go and then let, let's go into the post LeBron era. OK. 14, 15, they had a rough season. We know about that. They only had two guys play 72, which was Chalmers and Deng. 15, 16, all of these guys played at least 72. Winslow, Deng, Wade, Whiteside. He played Dragic. Year after. 16-17. Magruder. This is the year they came back from 11-30. and 30. Magruder. The 30-11 run. Magruder, Whiteside, James Johnson, Dragic, Tyler Johnson. Five guys. 17-18 season. Jay Rich, Ellington, Olenek, James Johnson, Tyler Johnson. Five guys played at least 72 games. Bam. I guess that was his rookie season. Played 69. Probably would have played the full 82. I think there were actually some games... He was held out. I don't even remember if that was injury related. So that's five guys. Could have been six. 18-19 season. Bam. KO. Josh Richardson. Hassan. Again. And Dwayne Wade at age 37 with a 29% usage. Okay. Which would be the same as Tyler's on this team. Played 72 games. Age 37. Wow. After the knee injuries, after everything. Now, I didn't play heavy minutes like he used to, but Damn. he played a big role on that team. Okay. So that's 18-19. Then we get into the COVID period. And see, I think this is the thing that's not talked about enough. I think that changed the way that some teams operated. Okay. Um, it was such a weird season. We had situations where guys were in, they were out, then they had the long break. So it's hard to really measure it because, again, there was like three months off in the middle of it. But I'm going to give this a 64-game pro rate because they played 73 games. So that's equivalent to playing 72 over 82. Duncan, Bam, Nunn, and KO all played to that level. 2021. That's a drop-off, though. It's a drop-off. No, and that – exactly. And then I'm going to – now, 72-game season in 2021, 64-game pro rate, Duncan and Bam. That was it. Okay, Iggy just missed. 21-22, back to a 72-game season, uh, back to 82, I'm sorry. On the uh, Duncan was the only one who played 72 games. P.J. Tucker, at his age, played 71. Last year, Struess and Bam played 72. Caleb played 71. And now this year, they may get one. So we have started to see it tail off. 
Do you think it changes? Do you think it ever goes the other way again? I mean, it has to because it's not all teams, right? Like, that's the thing about this. If you look around the league, I mean, I just quickly looked at some of the top teams in the West and the East, and it looks like if you add 10 games to all of their best players, they're going to probably play somewhere in the neighborhood of 70-something. And to me, that's like being available. Um, and I, I know that's my arbitrary ruling there, but that's just what I'm going with. So for the Heat, it does look like it's been something that has kind of haunted them since the pandemic. And I don't understand why that is like what, what there's no probably correlation directly to that. That's not what I'm inferring at all. It's more of that. Just like what has happened there. And to this point, like this season is different because things are normal now. And so like, to me, this one is a little different. It hurts more. It sticks out like a sore thumb more. And to me, it looks like all that culture stuff that they've been talking. I mean, it looks a little weird when you can't get guys out on the court. I mean, you had guys, you LeBron, who people have always said, you know, never fully bought in because he always wanted to do bigger and better things all led by himself or whatever the narrative is on him. He was available. You could not talk him out of playing. And like, there's a certain level of that that's missing. And, um, and you can't quantify it, but it matters because for you to say that Dwayne in his age 37 season played 72 games and we're going to have no guys really be able to crawl to that other than the ones you mentioned, that's glaring. Like that slaps a fan right in the face. Like is the farewell tour that big of a driver over a run towards a, fi a, a, a championship? Because like that's what everyone's goal is, right? Um, so to me – it, it leaves a sour taste in the mouth for sure. So let me ask you this, uh, Alex. Um, Greg mentioned the heat culture thing, right? And one of the lines in there is best conditioned, right? Best conditioned. It, it's right there. Okay. So we have enough. No, I want to get to that because I feel like the heat culture philosophy has shifted from Best conditions, so we're going to practice the hardest, be out there the longest. People are going to play. We're going to show up. We're going to outlast everybody, right? Like, that's the thing. We're going to drive towards it. It has shifted to the three words that I've used to praise Eric Spolster a lot because he embodies this. And these, this is like, this is the one. We have enough. Exactly what you said, right? This has become the heat culture philosophy. We have enough. Yes, we're shorthanded. No, not everybody she's playing. It's not necessarily necessary because we have enough. Next man will step up. We'll do some of the things that the other guy did. We'll gut it out. We'll grit it out. We'll play it in the mud, right? Our 12th guy on the roster will give us what the third guy on the roster was going to give us. And we're still going to get wins anyway. And that is a redeeming thing. Like to say, we have enough. It's much better than Doc Rivers saying, I don't have enough because I had a long flight. Okay. Like I much prefer the Eric Spolster philosophy. But we've talked about this in other areas when we've talked about personnel and personnel acquisition that the fact that they have a coach now who is so good at what he does and making yeah. more with less. At first, we were talking about it, and okay, they don't need to get other stars because, you know, he'll find the next Max Struess, he'll find this guy, he'll find that guy, along with, you know, the others who are good at, you know, talent procurement in the organization or scouting and all the rest of that. But now it almost seems like it's like, it's like, it's almost like setting, like you're playing Madden, okay, and you set it on like the hardest level just to make it as difficult, you know, it give me more challenges. That kind of feels like the heat culture now. It is the we have enough, not necessarily the best conditioned, right? Has it has it switched? I it mean, if feel you... that way, but go, go, go ahead, Leif. No, no, you go. No, no, finish what you were saying, though. Well, now I forgot the question, so you have to go. <laughs> well, I mean, it, I don't know if like, we have enough here. Let's go. You guys are are to me like can speak more to whether or not that has changed, but it does very much feel like we have enough you know, kind of blankets everything else. And I get, I get why. Cause it's like, we're never, like you said, we're, we, you don't want to be the ones out there talking to the media about, Oh, we're missing this guy and this guy. Like we already know that, like that doesn't need to be explained to media members. That doesn't need to be explained to fans. So it, 
them just taking it the, the the kind of the public image and i know it, not that they don't treat it that way you know internally as well but them taking that you know image to me is just smart pr it's just like forget all that we're out here to compete we don't care how many people are out we have other guys who can step up i completely get it but now it's gotten to the point where i just don't think people agree right and i know like whether or not people agree that the heat don't care spo doesn't care jimmy doesn't care they they don't hear that stuff they don't hear they they block out they block out all the all the noise they'll tell you that game in game out if you ask them about what other people are talking about like they don't care but you know like their belief that they'll be able to be okay in the playoffs i think that's kind of where that line's been drawn because a lot of people are like ah, you sure you can do that again or are you absolutely sure because yeah it is a different roster it feels like a deeper roster than last year if you just go through the names but like i said before there's been no consistency no foundation and the to me, the biggest difference with like this year between other years where Jimmy, you know, has quote unquote coasted. I don't really believe he's not trying. I just don't think he tries as hard as he does uh, during the playoffs. I think that the biggest difference this year is that usually at this time of year, Jimmy's already doing that stuff. And like Correct. you kind of forget, right? Like it, it, it even happened as far back in the, as the first couple of seasons here. Like that Jim VP stuff, he wasn't playing at a Jim VP level the first half of that season. And I know, like, he played amazing in the second half, and people forgot. Same thing has happened kind of every other year. Like, you know, he's all right in the first half, turns it up in the second half, and ramps up towards the playoffs. That Jimmy Callender has been right year after year, except this year. We thought it was happening there in February, and then it's just kind of tailed off a little bit. And I just think it's a more extreme version of what he's done in the past. And I also think it's got to do with the wear and tear. I think that's also, like, a huge difference between, you know, some of the other examples when you're just going back to, to – you know, comparing the Heat players like you guys were. I, I think, you know, shout out to LeBron and Wade for being as available as they were, playing through injury, all that. I think it's clear that stuff has changed within the last decade league-wide. To me, that sucks. The The fact that it's changed sucks. And I, and They're I, not going to start the season, so it's like they have to find a way to, to elongate their careers, and I think this is the kind of the compromise. It's like you don't know night but to the, night but, if you're going to see these guys. Well, that's true, but but it does feel like the it feels like the bar has changed here in the sense of like <laughs> I remember having these debates when like the Heat were in a certain position, like should they go for the one seed? And it was like, okay, do they really need home court throughout the playoffs? Or even during the big three era, which obviously a more talented team than this, okay? But during the big three era. It was like, well, not necessarily. Like you've got LeBron, okay, and you got Dwayne in some piece, right? And you've got Chris on court in the first couple and, of rounds. No, but they didn't. They didn't always. But no, 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 that's what I'm gonna get to. They didn't have home court down the line. Like they didn't have. They beat Indiana on the. Indiana was a one seed one year. Chicago yeah. was a one seed one year. And we were always having these conversations. And this goes all the way back to Shaq being here. Uh, whether it was important to be a one seed in Shaq, I used to downplay that stuff. And I remember that there was pushback about that from you know because pat believed in going for it at that point and of course if you remember they, they were not the one seed in uh in 0506 i mean they had that kind of choppy season and they had to go to they, you know they had to beat detroit you know as a road team in the eastern conference finals but we've shifted now from do you need the one seed so do you need home court throughout the entire eastern conference yeah. to like, I mean, if this isn't a conversation about the one seed. This is a conversation about just being a playoff team. Like, because you're as you're a playing team, you are not a playoff team. Like, you are you're literally on the outside looking in, trying to scrape your way in. And I don't have faith in this team in a one game scenario at home. From what I've seen lately, I mean, would they even be a home favorite in in a seven eight game against a Philadelphia team with Embiid? No, right? Probably not. And. Like the, the the other part of this that that gets difficult to manage is like, let's say they just took half the season um, seriously with the games that they were available. They could have enough cushion where they all could be resting right now. And so like that's where it gets even more to the point where I start to get frustrated by the fact that they've kind of slow played this and now they're in a situation where they could get bounced. So anyway, that's just another Isn't that point kind of, of the trade off that they're making now where it's like before like you guys were talking about during the big three years even if they weren't a number one seed they were like okay we're gonna have home court in the first couple of rounds and then from there you know whatever just you know th thug it out basically right whereas, whereas now it's like 
you know, maintenance plan throughout the season. And then the grind is, you know, get out of the play-in tournament and face a harder path back to the finals. And that's kind of like they, they've ex- they've essentially like traded the old ways for this now. And to me, it it, it pretty much just feels like that's the, the, the biggest difference. And then also you talk about just Jimmy, man, like the amount of wear and tear he's had on his body, specifically what happened to him in the last playoff run where I thought he was a, like at the past couple, really, because – I think he missed a game uh, a couple conference finals ago, right, against Boston. And that season, they were the number one seed. They didn't have Tyler available. Tyler was playing hurt in the playoffs and didn't play well um, before he was out. They tried to bring him back. Did not work out. We, we don't even really talk about that anymore. Was it game seven of that of 2022, the conference finals? They tried to bring him back. Didn't work out. He barely played, and they just stopped playing him after – that first stand, if I remember correctly, and they were the one seed. And look what that got them. What I remember more than anything, when I think about that that season and how it ended, of course, behind the the Jimmy shot, which will li- forever live in all of our heads, of course, is how hard it was to get there, and them constantly losing at home. They lost three over in that series. What did the one seed get them? And then last year they get there, they get to the finals as the eighth seed. So I think part of it is like, you know, how much does it really matter? I think that's like me trying to get in their heads a little bit because of the way that some of these seasons have played out. They got to the finals in 2020. Of course, the bubble is a weird kind of situation, but they did it as a fifth seed then. And of course, again, home court was not a factor in the bubble, but I just don't think they care that much about the seeding. And I feel like that's kind of the trade off that's happened now. It's like it's all about the playoffs. Forget like busting your ass for the regular season. No, you're right. I, it, that that has been a part of the trade off, but it's a stark difference to say, okay, we're comfortable being the number two seed, and we'll have to play one road series, perhaps, or one, start one series on the road in the Eastern playoffs, as opposed to we're comfortable in the play in, where we have to win a, a home play in game just to get in, and if we don't, we've got to win uh, another play in game. And then that gives us the right to go on the road to play a top two seed in the Eastern Conference. And if we win that, then we go on the road again. And then if we win that, we go on the road again. I think, you know, part of this is like what they did last year was unprecedented. It was unprecedented. Like it's the only thing we're holding on to hope for right now with this team. And it literally has never happened before. Like the only thing that's equivalent was Houston winning a championship as the sixth seed. And they had a team in his prime. Okay. Yeah. Or the like, Knicks when they were the eighth seed and they got all the way to the finals. And that was completely weird because that team was only six games behind the first seeded heat. But it was, as I mentioned earlier, a 50 game season. And so the teams were not that different. And even though they lost Ewing, they didn't have a healthy Spreewell, Houston, that whole team together. And they put that team together on the fly. Um, uh, the fact that we have to, we have two examples basically over like 25 to 30 NBA years of something somewhat equivalent to what the heat did last year just tells you it's not going to happen again and again i if the i think if if and this is not to say that the heat want their players to be hurt or they wanted to be in the plan i'm not saying any of that i'm just saying that i understand the fan frustration with this because we've not seen this team healthy long enough for it to figure anything out and i think that although we could go through each injury or ailment individually and we can go through it, and I'm sure that's what you know. Some of the organization will be upset at us for even doing this because they'll say, "Well, what do you want us to do about you know Tyler has this freak thing, okay, or Jimmy has you know needs some time away from the team. We're going to grant that to him or whatever because that was earlier. Remember that was for personal issues, and we all understood that, okay, and we under- we, we respected the organization's stance to give him the time. But the problem is it's mounted now, where it's like it's just it's it's everybody. Literally, it's everybody. And that just, I, I think that's where the frustration comes in. So I don't know that we've solved anything at this point. I just know that over the last 10 games, they need to get some bodies back, right? Like, even Can they these, add most available to that mantra. It's a good way to close. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you for listening to the Five on the Floor on the Five Reasons Sports Network. After all, Someone needs to listen to my dad.